Welcome everybody. Thank you very much for taking time today to come and have a look at um, what we can do at Tuition Highway. Um, I'll introduce myself um, in a few moments, but if I talk through um, Tuition Highway, first of all, and um, the structure of the um, organisation and how then that can move into some maths uh, crash courses that can support uh, you or your uh, children to ensure they uh, maximise success in uh, GCE Cambridge um, maths. Um, but we start off, this is the um, outline of the agenda um, for the next um, probably 15-20 minutes in terms of the presentation. Um, and then at the end of that, um, I'll give a, a brief demonstration lesson um, so you can see how it might work in, in action. And there'll be a chance for um, you to ask questions um, towards the end. Okay, so um, this is uh, a little bit about the company. Um, you can see the bullet points. I'm not going to read every bullet point out, but you can see that we're an online education service uh, based in London and Karachi. Um, the second bullet point is quite uh, quite important for this company and for the um, rationale is that we bring uh, UK-based tutors uh, to become the tutors and teachers for these courses. Um, I'm involved in some of the recruitment for those teachers and certainly the people that um, I've recruited are people that have been based in the UK and are qualified teachers and uh, many are teaching at the moment in UK schools. And obviously we're formed as a result of the growing need for structured online tutoring and I think research suggests that um, those people who receive additional tutoring and additional support over and above um, the support and teaching they have in schools will do better as a, as a generalisation than those that don't receive tutoring. I've mentioned about um, top education experts. Um, I'll introduce myself in a moment, but Christine, who is the second picture um, at the bottom here, is uh, an uh, ex-head of um, science in a, in a secondary school and does lots of um, online tutoring, for example, and she has a, a you know, very um, detailed qualifications that, that support um, her work as an example. Some of the issues with traditional tutoring on a one-to-one -one basis or a small group basis is cost um, and we have kept the cost down at uh, Tuition Highway um, to make it affordable um, and you'll see some of that um, through show up a little bit later on. Um, Obviously, if you've got to commute to um, a tutor's house or a tutor's got to come to your house, then you've got all of the transport issues and the online tuition um, stops all of that and you'll, you'll see that today. Um, in terms of safeguarding, um, obviously, if you're presenting through the um, internet and online, then you haven't got the face-to-face -face security issues that, that might um, be uh, the case in, in traditional tutoring. Um, and there's all sorts of other issues like the lack of service standardisation. As I mentioned earlier on, um, we are a company that are based around UK um, qualified teachers. Um, I myself, am, as I'm an ex-head teacher, um, with other companies, um, sometimes, I'm not saying all the time, but sometimes that can be an issue and you might find that your tutor is somebody who's not a qualified teacher, for example. Some of the benefits, I won't run through all of these. Um, I've mentioned some of those already. Um, but I think the bottom bullet point is, is worth a consideration, um, as well as the live um, sessions. All of the sessions are recorded. That creates a huge advantage for learners, because if there's a session that they can't attend, then they can go back into the recording. Or if they do attend a session and they find that there's an area that they're not quite sure about, um, they can go back over that recording and go through the work again and that can um, again be immensely beneficial. A brief outline of how it works, there's a link here, um, so do have a look at that and, and go onto the website and have a look at uh, this in more detail. Um, but broadly, um, there's different ways of funding the course and it's very simple as you've seen today to click on the link, put in the password and enter the classroom session. Okay, so a little bit more, maybe five minutes or so, about the course that I'm running, which is the Cambridge GCE Maths course, um, crash course. 
And the purpose of that, oops, I'll come back to that in a minute. The purpose of this course is to prepare um, students to ensure that they, as I mentioned earlier, maximise success in their, in their O-level course. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about how that will work in a moment or two. A little bit about me. Um, you already know that my name is Mark Trusson. Um, I've been a UK-based teacher for the last 30 years or so, um, mostly maths, but I've also taught some IT and some PE. Um, I was a head teacher for 11 years up until 2016, and I now run my own company, um, and my company is a whole raft of things, including training teachers, uh, training trainee teachers, sorry, um, and also training people who are graduates but um, need to improve their maths knowledge to become maths teachers. So I'm training the maths teachers of the future as well as um, students who may well go on to be maths teachers in the future, who knows. Um, I've tutored maths on a one-to-one -one basis um, throughout my, my career as well as uh, teaching in schools and I'm also familiar with online provisions such as Tuition Highway and some of the work that I do through the, the bullet point above is also um, online. Um, my qualifications, um, I have a BA Honours degree uh, which is a teaching qualification and a Master's degree in Education and I also hold the MPQH which is the National Professional Qualification for Head Teachers and the SIP qualifications which is School Improvement Partner qualifications. So that's basically around going into schools and working with schools to um, monitor um, and quality assure their work. Um, this is directly from the um, Cambridge GCE course um, and the reason why um, it's a beneficial course for youngsters. Um, so do have a look at the Cambridge GC um, website, uh, which is uh, a wealth of information um, that will support your learning. Um, you can't see this particularly well, but as I say, the sessions are recorded, so go and have a look. But you can see this is the outline of the syllabus. Um, so there are 42 um, topics. Some of those are interrelated, so we don't need to cover 42 sessions to cover all of the um, topics, but there are 42 areas. Um, and down um, here, um, I've got a link which will take you to that syllabus. So again, if you can put that into your browser, you can see this in, in more detail and have a look at that. Um, examples of questions, again, can't see those very well today, but uh, if you go to that Cambridge website, you can see that. Um, it's very traditionally set out. Um, there are two papers um, at the end of the um, examination. One is a, a shorter questions, about 25 questions, I think, um, and that's an example of that on the right. On the left, longer questions for the second paper, of which there are fewer questions, um, but you need to answer in more detail. And we'll prepare you for um, both sets of papers um, to ensure that uh, you are well prepared and ready for the exam. So how are we going to work? Well, we're going to cover one or two um, topics per session, as I mentioned earlier on. Some of those uh, topics are interrelated, so it may be that we can cover two topics in one session. Um, it may be that we need one session to cover a topic in a little bit more detail. Um, and we'll work progressively through examples to build knowledge and understanding, and importantly, using techniques to flow into the next stage of the topic. And I'll try and illustrate that in a moment or two when we do a brief demonstration. Um, we'll use practice, practice questions, moving from the, the more straightforward questions to harder questions, and I'll be using those practice questions from past papers and from the specification papers, um, so they're you know, directly correlated to the types of questions that you'll, you'll get when you take your um, TCE in the, in the summer. Um, we will do some self-assessment um, and do some marking on screen and you'll see how that will work in a moment. You'll be able to self-check your work um, as we go along. Um, as mentioned, we'll do some past uh, exam paper questions. There will be a chance to ask questions. Um, we will be able to un unmute mics and so on. Today is a little bit um, of a, an introduction, so it won't be as interactive. Um, but you can ask questions through the mic. Um, you can put your hands up, as you've seen, on the facilities at the bottom. And there's also a chat facility where you can ask a question to the whole group um, or to me as a presenter um, privately. And I can see those questions, and then you know we can we can answer those either publicly or privately, uh, depending on on the nature of those. Um, and as I've mentioned before, there's a chance to um, watch uh, the recording back um, 
if the session is missed or if there's something that's not quite understood. So plenty of opportunities, and that's multiple opportunities to look at those sessions. Um, and very briefly, the details, um, we'll be running sessions every Wednesday and every Friday, um, starting next week. Um, so the first session will be Wednesday next week. Um, start date um, is the 30th of January, and that will be at uh, 4 p.m. in the afternoon in uh, Pakistan time. Um, in the UK, that's at 11 a.m. Um, and the sessions, as I say, hour and a half, and we'll cover um, like I say, several several um, areas over the course of that session. So what I thought I would do now, if that's okay, um, Shoab, is to um, show a brief demo session. Would that be appropriate? Yes, yes, so why not? Great. Okay, so I'm going to um, just open up into a, a new application. So uh, I'm going to take you into what's called QuickTime Player, and I hope that you can see my um, screen. Um, Sure. Could you just mention? Could you just tell me if everybody can see that screen? Uh, yes. So it should be show, should be showing solving equations objectives. Yes, yeah, that's great. Okay, so this is a, a typical set of um, objectives for um, a a session. So three objectives uh, to understand various methods to solve equations with the unknown on one side of the equation. And I'll come back to it in a minute. I won't read all, all of this, it's just to give you a demonstration. Um, but what I'm doing is just working through an interactive whiteboard, uh, which gives me a little bit more flexibility to um, you know, kind of demonstrate things. So this is uh, an equation with the unknown on one side, the unknown being the x here. Um, and we want to solve that. Now, most pupils that are studying on GCE when they get to year 11 will be able to solve these quite easily. But what we'd want to do is build up some techniques to ensure that they can use those techniques for harder questions later on. So if I took this um, first question here and I wanted to solve it, most people could probably do that in their head and, and give me an answer. But what I'd want to do is build up a couple of techniques to allow them to answer more difficult questions like these ones uh, coming up where the unknown are on both sides. So in this example, I might start by saying, well, we'll use a number chain to give you a technique to support you to answer the question, which you'll be able to use for more difficult questions later on. So in this number chain, X is going in. In the boxes, we need to explain what's happening as a process. And there are two processes taking place. The first one is it's being multiplied by two. And the second one, it's being uh, having three added to it. And then what comes out after the equal sign is 9. OK, so that's a, a, another representation of that equation. To solve it using this technique, I just need to reverse the chain, and I'll get the answer come out on the other side. So to reverse it, I need to reverse the signs, uh, but keep the, uh, the numbers the same. So in the first example, I'm going to uh, take away 3 instead of adding 3, and then uh, divide by 2. So if I take 9, and I take away 3, I end up with 6. And if I then divide by 2, I end up with an answer of 3. So my answer there would be x equals 3. OK, and I've solved that equation. Now, as I said earlier, you could probably have done that in your head, but we can use these techniques a little bit later on. Um, I'm going to do that again, but I'm going to use a different set of techniques, um, which might be um, helpful for the next um, harder questions. So with the same question here, OK, just going to rewrite it here. Um, a different way is to consider a float and ping technique, and it's two applications. Um, what I mean by float and ping, the first process is to float anything that's added or taken away, like in a balloon, across the equal sign to the other side of the equal sign. The ping, so that's the float, the ping is when it goes over the equal sign here, and we ping and change the sign. So the sign becomes negative instead of positive because we pinged it and we floated it to the other side. Now we need to tidy that up. So I've got my 2x. I've already floated this uh, balloon with plus 3x over to the other side, pinged it. So that's disappeared now. And I've got 9 take away 3 on the other side, which becomes 6. So I've got 2x equals 6. OK, so as I simplify that. The second part of the technique is to escalate. And again, I'd spend more time um, with the pupils to um, explain this in more detail, and we'd do more um, than just one uh, 
um, example. But in this case, I'm going to escalate either up or down. If I had x over 2, I would escalate that up. But I've got x, uh, 2x, so I'm going to escalate it down, which would give me 6 over 2. 6 divided by 2, which means it's uh, an answer of 3. So I get the same answers I've got over here. I've just used a different set of techniques. And then I would apply that. I'm not going to go through all of these, but I would apply those techniques to harder questions. Um, I would use a float and ping example here to uh, solve this uh, unknown on both sides. So I would start by floating and pinging the smallest number to the other side. As I mentioned, as it goes over the equal sign, it changes, so it becomes minus 1. I kind of tidy that up, and I've got 4x equals 2x. I've got this plus 7 take away 1, which gives me plus 6. Okay. I need to float and ping again, uh, this time the x's, because I need to get those over to the other side. Um, there's no sign here, but that would be plus if there was a sign there. Um, anything without a sign would be positive. So I float and ping it, and I get minus 2x. Tidy that up, I get 2x, because I've got 4x here, take away 2x um, equals 6. And then I can escalate from that previous method to give me 3. So I get x equals 3 um, as my answer. But you can see that what I'm doing is I'm trying to use techniques very rapidly today, um, taking our time a little bit more when we actually do proper sessions, um, to build up techniques to be able to solve those harder questions. We would then move on, I'm not going to go through this today, um, to harder questions again, um, where we've got to multiply out brackets and then use the float and ping or the number change to solve those types of questions, and finish off with an exam question. And this was pulled um, directly from the specification paper for 2019. Um, and you can see that 7a is a uh, solving equation question where you need to multiply out the brackets. You get unknown on both sides. We can use the float and ping techniques or the number chain techniques, and we can solve that um, having built that up. Okay, so that's, that's my um, very brief um, session to explain to you um, how the process might work. Um, so we're now back to the PowerPoint. And Shoab, can I pass back over to you to lead on any questions and uh, details that I've missed out? So thank you very much, Mark. Uh, if there is any question, uh, you can raise your hand and ask uh, if there's anything. I hope I didn't go through that too rapidly. I just quite quite quickly, but um no, I'm sorry, I did yeah. <laughs> right, I think that, that serves the purpose. You will go in detail when you start on start on Wednesday. So yeah. Uh, just a quick thing, uh, let us ask our participants if they can raise their hands and, and show us that is there any question that they want to ask or otherwise we will close the session if there is no question. Um, one thing I'd just like to explain if that's okay before we, we yeah. close. Um, mm -hmm. That that explanation and the, the look at those um, questions today was, as I, as I explained earlier on, very much a demonstration and very brief. What we would do is we'd build in some pause time, and we would have um, you know a series of questions. If I just show you here, um, if you can see on the on the board there, um, so we would take a series of questions, and we wouldn't work on all of those questions, but we'd work on three or four of those questions, and then we would mark them to check that you're moving in the right direction. So you can see these questions here on the screen are the uh, very first example that I went through. Uh, where you've got unknown on one side. And so you'd get some practice of those, and we would mark those together, and then we would go on and do some practice of more difficult questions, like the ones that I've just shown you here, um, with the unknown on both sides. So the idea is that we would do a demonstration through me. Um, you would then go and do some practice. We would then mark those questions. We would make sure that you're ready to move on. Then we would do a demonstration of the slightly harder questions that related to the same topic. And then you would do some questions and mark those. So it would be very much taking you through at a, at a, at a pace that ensures that you 
understand, um, not quite as rapid as, as I went through um, earlier on today. So I just want to make that, make that clear. Fantastic. So if we have any part, uh, questions from our participants. Uh, Mr. Yeah, go ahead, please. Um, I was wondering if you could tell me how long it will take for the syllabus to be finished? Mark, the question for you. Okay, so there, there are 42 topics on the syllabus, so that's quite, quite a lot, but we're going to cover two sessions a week, 90, 90 minutes um, per uh, session. So as I said earlier, we'll try and ensure that we cover one or two topics per session. If it's a longer topic, uh, we might need to use the whole session to cover one topic. Um, but I, I would uh, have thought that we would get within four weeks or so of the examination, um, and then we would use the last four weeks, so four weeks before the examination to cover the, the syllabus, um, and then we would use the um, last four weeks to you know, really focus just on um, past paper questions and giving you opportunities to do past paper questions. That would be the intention. Um, if there's something that is, as you know, we 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 studied uh, too quickly and the understanding isn't quite there, we might need to do a, a you know another um, catch-up session. If some sessions are a bit more rapid and everybody understands them quickly, then we can move on more quickly. Um, but that would be the plan. Thank you. Thank you. I was just wondering if we have any questions of our own from any past papers that we've had, ha can we ask you those questions? Yes, of course. We can, we can um, make this as flexible as the group that's working with me um, requires. So what we could do is um, you know, either create a 10-minute or 15-minute um, space within a session and you can ask those questions and pass those on to me. Um, I don't think you can upload into the um, highway tuition software, so it may be that um, with parental agreement you can use a, a tuition highway email to send me the materials and I can upload those in advance um, and then we can go through those. Um, but certainly it's, it's flexible to do that and, and that would be a sensible way to work. If there's something you're not quite sure of, then um, to get some, some feedback and input, that would be very helpful, I think. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Mark. Uh, do we have any other questions from any of our participants? Okay, so in, in the chat we've got a question about how long the syllabus takes to be finished, so I think that was also asked verbally, so I think we've answered that at the moment. Um, Okay, so uh, okay, then this is Shazia. Can you explain it? You know, uh, Shazia, can you hear us? Uh, Shazia, if you can hear me, please raise your hand. Shazia, can you hear me? Okay, you can hear me. Of course. Okay, uh, you, you have a question, right? If there's anything please ask me uh, or Mark, um, you want me to explain something again? Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, Mark, I uh, think thank you very much. Uh, everybody, thank you very much for joining in today. Uh, we, we are going to start the session from Wednesday, 4 p.m. Uh, so all of those who joined in today will not have to download this application again and hopefully it will be a seamless thing. Uh, and do pass it on to your friends and colleagues that the session is starting and if they want to join in, they can, of course. Uh, and if there's anything, just let us know. Call us uh, on our mobile, or WhatsApp, or email, and we are here to help you out. So, 
Okay. Unless there's a question from anybody else, we will close the session for today. Okay, and I look forward to seeing hopefully all of you on Wednesday next week and uh, to pick up the point about um, working flexibly, we can discuss and, and kind of, you know, work out together how um, you can bring your own questions to the um, sessions. So I look forward to seeing you next week. Okay. Uh, Mark, there's one more question from Ms. Poon uh, before we go. Okay. Uh, no, please go ahead. I've unmuted you. Mr. Point, I was just wondering, do you think there's a difference between you teaching math and a normal study teacher teaching math here? Like the difference in the risk that you would have, do you think there is? Um, it's a difficult question to answer, but thank you for the question. Um, different teachers will have different styles and approaches, um, for sure. Um, and you might find that um, in your school or college that um, the teacher might teach you in a slightly different way to me. Um, but ultimately, um, if you've got a, a variety of techniques to answer a, a question, um, say three or four different ways of doing that, each person will find um, a technique that suits their style. Um, and they may use something from their uh, class teacher um, or they may use something that, that I teach. Um, but ultimately, the, the wider range of techniques that you've got, the um, greater understanding you're going to have of a particular topic. Um, so I, I don't think that's a, that's a problem. As I've mentioned in my introduction, I've, I've taught for a very long time. That means that I've taught classes that other teachers have taught before me, and I've had classes that other teachers have taught after me. Um, and, you know, students need to adapt. And I'm sure that's the same with you. I'm sure you haven't had the same, you know, math teacher throughout your, um, throughout your studies. Um, so I don't think that'll be a problem. I've also been a tutor, um, you know, for, for many years. And, it, and it's working out, you know, what, what are the best ways going forward? We have limited time. It's a crash course. So I'm not going to be able to teach you exhaustive ways to complete questions. Um, some of those will mirror your um, class teachers and some of those uh, might be slightly different. But um, hopefully it won't be confusing. Hopefully it'll be um, something that will, uh, you know, kind of give you a, a, a larger and wider range of uh, approaches. So I hope that, I hope that answers um, the question that you've asked. This is Thank you. Um, how we are we going to solve the question? Um, so you will um, work on the question. So if I, get, if I just pull up an example here. So this is one, one example. Obviously, this is solving equations. So we would, as a group, say, OK, let's take question A, question C, question D. Depends how quickly you understand the explanations. And you would need to um, do those yourself um, on a piece of paper. So you'd need a pen and paper um, with you. Um, to complete those questions using the techniques that I've just been through. We'll give you, so let's say, I don't know, for example, five minutes to answer three questions or seven minutes to answer three questions, um, and you can give me feedback on how quickly you're, you're answering those, how easy you find them. Um, and then I will then go through those same questions that you've completed and go through them on the whiteboard in the way that I did at the beginning of the session. Um, and you will then be able to see whether you've marked those correctly or not. So you'll be able to, and we'll, we'll talk as well as you're marking those, not just about whether you've got those um, right or wrong, but also about how the mark scheme works and how you'll build up um, method marks. Um, because this, this might be a three mark question, and it may be that you get the answer wrong, but you get a method mark or two method marks um, through the, your workings out and your, your method. Um, so we'll talk that through as well as, a, as well as you know, just pure marking correct or incorrect. Um, and hopefully that, those, those uh, familiarities around method marks and what you need to show the examiner um, will help you as well to you know, generate marks in the actual exam, even if you don't get the final answer um, correct. So I, if, I, if I've understood your question correctly, that's, that, that's how that would work. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? I'm just looking at the chat. There isn't anything else written in the chat at the moment. I think everybody's asked what, what they wanted to ask out to this point. Any other questions?
I think the other thing to mention as well, I showed you the um, syllabus um, at the, the, the start. If I quickly go back to that, Oops. if I can. Yeah, here. Um, we don't need to work through these chronologically. Um, you know, we can work through these um, based on, on your feedback to me and what areas and topics you'd like to go through. Because obviously some areas are going to be a lot easier and more simple to understand than others. Um, broadly, if we work through number, for example, um, you know, when we look at that in more detail, we might find actually we don't, don't need to do very much on that, if anything at all. But when we come on to more difficult um, areas over here, um, I can't read it very well um, on this screen, but if we came across, um, you know, sort of uh, to do with uh, symmetry, for example, and you find that a little bit more um, challenging, then we can spend a little bit, bit more time on that. So we can be flexible. And we can work through that. What I would suggest is you go to this link here, have a look at the syllabus, and have a look at the areas that you find um, more difficult and more challenging, and then you can feed that back to me in the first session. So next week on Wednesday, um, we'll fix on one particular topic. Um, I haven't decided yet what's the best uh, to do yet, but we'll work through one topic. But during that session, we'll have plenty of time, and I'll create some time to ensure that you give me some feedback about which topic you want to cover next, so we can, you know, kind of we can work on that together. I think somebody's asked um, about past pa past papers. Somebody got a question about past papers? Um, yeah, so somebody's asked about are we going to do past paper questions while covering the syllabus? Um, yep, we will be. Um, so as I mentioned earlier on, these uh, you can see on your screen are example questions that I pulled directly from past papers. So my intention for each session would be we work through some questions, um, we gradually increase the um, difficulty until we reach the point where um, I feel you can answer a past question, and then we'll have a past question at the end of the session that you can do, um, and we can mark that um, just before the end of the session. So um, the aim is to do that, but also, as I've also mentioned, the aim is to finish the syllabus in good time, that we can have a good four weeks or so where we just focus on past papers. Um, so not past paper questions, but actually past papers. And um, you know, we'll, I'll give you, I'll send you links to download those papers. You can do those, and we can go through those and pick up any um, particular problems that you might have had. Um, so yeah, so I hope that answers that question. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, thank you very much, Mark. If there's any other question, we're going to take it as a last question, or otherwise we otherwise we call it off. Thank you very much, uh, all of you, for your time today. Uh, I know it's Sunday and it's, it's a busy time of the week. But thank you very much, all of you, to join in us today uh, and hopefully we look forward to you to join us uh, from Wednesday onwards uh, for our first session of the crash course that Mark is going to put on. Okay, thank you again and we'll see you on Wednesday. Thank you very much. Thanks everybody. Take care.